Hello, I've just been trying to fiddle about with my new camera. I know I keep going on about it, but I don't know what I'm doing. And I've tried to get the, the white balance to make my hair show up the color that it is because it's looking really auburn. It looks all right in the screen now, but then when I play it back, it just looks, it, it just looks weird just weird even the placement of the blonde bits just looks very strange everything is just very strange it might be something to do with the fact that it's really sunny out there today it's absolutely lovely actually it's sunday the end of march middle of march i don't know what the date is what's the date 19th of march and it's mother's day here in the uk i've just got off the phone with my mum i've just been chatting with her about my utility room and talking about that is <laughs> an ongoing saga but it's going to be lovely i'll show you when it's finished i have been recording little bits here and there so I'll perhaps put together a little video for anybody who's interested in the changes that we've done there but this is going to be a bit of a podcast because I have got a finished object and I've tampered with a jumper that I finished a little while ago and I think I should wear it more now because I think it's um I think the fit is much better so without further ado, I'll have a slurp of my tea and then I will start showing you all the lovely woolly goodness, all the good woolly stuff. Uh, I've got on my tree light sweater at the moment. It's a Jennifer Steingast jumper knitted in Let Low P. If you want to know more details, just search in YouTube Tales from Cuckoo Land, Tree Lights, and you'll find it. And all of the information will pop up. Little Timmy the hamster's just heard me and he's woken up. But he has already had some apple today and he can't have too much. So I'm going to pretend that I, I, I'm, I'm going to pretend he's not there and not give him more apple. Right, so let me take this off. I threw, I threw these clothes on because I've been decorating this morning and then Teddy, my middle son, wanted to go to the Mendip point to point and his lift fell through. So I ended up, I've been driving around Somerset today. So I threw on some clothes so that um, I would look respectable enough. And then I thought, well, since I've got clothes on, I can do, I can do my podcast. So the, the thing that I have tampered with is my Wild Posy jumper, which is by Melody Hoffman, B Mandarin. And um, I realized I wasn't wearing it because I wasn't that taken with the fit. And the reason is because I felt that it needed just a little bit more length. It's not gonna look right with this dress, it's because it's not the right length but needed some more on the sleeves on the cuffs and some more on the on the waist ribbing the bottom ribbing so I don't know if you can see that it's all nice and uniform and fluffy to about there so that was the old bit and this here is the new bit that I've just added on it really was a good demonstration in how much Plotu Lopi, which is what this is knitted in, how much it softens up with wear and with blocking. It was, it was quite a surprise just how different the, the yarn actually becomes. So I'll just pop this on. And now you can see and again, if you want to see it how it was before, Tales from Cuckoo Land, Wild Posy Jumper, and you'll find it. Oh, my sleeves are stuck up my sleeves, if you know what I mean. So previously, it went to about there. And I've just extended it a little bit. And it looks really good with a t-shirt and jeans, more than it does over a dress. 
I think what I should have done really, but I just didn't want to, was unravel all of the sleeves all the way up to here and unravel the body all the way up and a bit of the yoke maybe because the armholes are too low down. My armpit is all the way up here and the arm thing's there. So I needed it more like that. And it means that I've got five inches of positive ease and I think that that was too much. And the reason why I got the fit so wrong on this jumper and on many of my others is because I have thought that I had bigger boobs than I actually have for a very long time. My friend wanted to know what the positive ease is on this. She designs knitwear, it's Amy, Taylor S Studios. She designs knitwear and she said, I would like to see, I would like to understand visually what positive ease looks like on other body shapes. So she said, can you measure how much positive ease you've got? So I got out my um, tape measure and I measured the sweater and then I thought, oh, I'll just measure my boobs as well. And I'm a whole inch, slightly more than a whole inch, smaller than I thought I was. And now I know why I struggle to get things to fit me sometimes. <laughs> All this time. And if anything, I've gained weight, so I've got bigger boobs than before. So goodness only knows how much bigger I've been making things than I've needed to in the past. What oh, Wally. And I still have this much Cloti Lopi left from doing not only this jumper. I, don't, I think I bought the right amount for what the pattern said but I ended up with so much left over I've even managed to knit a perec out of a single strand of this stuff and I've got so much left that I think that I'm going to be able to knit something to wear on my head and you know what it's, it's not itchy at all it's scratchy in the same way a scouring pad is scratchy but not itchy I don't find it all that uncomfortable at all take it off because it's very warm. It's so sunny out there today, it's sort of hurting my eyes a bit. I'm not adjusted to the weather yet. And also with decorating so much in the um, utility room, and it's quite a dark room that one. The reason why it's taken me so long is there's a, there's a lot of bare plaster, bare wood, bare MDF, and of course you need to do a lot of prep for those materials and then you need to do two base coats and then you need to do two top coats so I'm basically painting everything four or five times <laughs> it's going to be worth it it's absolutely lovely I'm gonna move my bed in there when it's finished I feel like I'm rushing this and that's just because I I want to get back in there and start sanding off and polyfiller but I also want to show you this I've finished it's been a year in the making, over a year in the making, because I cast this on for part of the cosy blanket along that Cherie from Ollie and Bella and Ali from Little Drops of Wonderful were hosting, not this January, but last January, <laughs> that's when I cast it on. It was my nod to a blanket, although it's not, it's a wrap. It's the Half and Half Triangle Wrap by Pearl Soho. I did a little mini film very briefly on Wednesday before I had blocked this for, I've got a little Patreon channel and uh, I did not like how it was feeling. It felt so kind of dense and heavy and stifling like I was stuck like this. But I've blocked it now and it's completely completely changed the feeling of this wrap. It's lovely. It's just really lovely. I'm still uncertain about the colours. I still feel like it was a very bold move choosing these colours to go together. 
but I think I think it's I think I'll wear it I'm going to have to do the thing that I usually do which is put it away and forget about it and then when I stumble across it again I'll like it it's just because it doesn't look in real life how it looked up here but so I need to forget this image and just go with this so what can I tell you about this while I'm stood up trying it on for you just move my chair out of the way move the mini coffee table out of the way oh. got stuck on something there the way I think that I'm going to wear this absolutely giant blanket <laughs> look at it it's huge doesn't it doesn't it drop nicely? Now it's been blocked, it's really lovely. The way I think I will wear this mostly is sort of flung over my shoulder casually and then like that. This is how I think I'm going to wear it most of the time. I could obviously wear it, what's that bit of fluff and the dog hair? I could obviously wear it, oh no it's caught my bracelet like this bandana style which now it's been blocked is absolutely lovely comfortable it's long enough it's very nice not too much bulk around the back very very cozy but i think i'll probably wear it mostly on my shoulder i could wear it like this there's plenty of it so that would be warm reading in bed or knitting in bed more likely for me and I'll just wear it whichever colour I fancy that day or whatever colour looks best with the clothes that I'm wearing my friend who I showed it to she likes it like this I'm less keen on that I'm not much of a geometric person, but why not? Now, details, details about this. Sorry, that was an extreme close up, wasn't it? And I'm losing my bra strap. So let me show you. I've got my leftovers in this lovely bag that my friend Catherine gave me as a present and she's fed of roses. I had three balls of this bluey teal. Margot, stop digging. Margot's digging. Look, there she is. And three balls of this mustard yellow. The This is the um, brand, Regia Premium. It's Merino Yak. And it's a... Uh-oh, here's Bunny. It's a sock wool. It's 58% wool, 28% polyamide 14% yak um, one of the colors was 07515 and one of the colors was 07504 I don't know which was which hopefully by the time you're watching this I will have fathomed it out and I will have a Ravelry page but if I haven't <laughs> it's coming you can Google things. If I'm too slow for you, you can Google things. So the really fun thing is, I've got enough of these to make some stripy socks. Of course, they don't have to be socks. It could be anything. But I'm thinking stripy socks. I made this slightly different to the pattern. I added the I-cord binding, no, the I-cord edge, the integrated I-cord edge. Had I have realised I was going to do that, I would have done an I-cord cast on, but I didn't, so I ended up having to do an applied I-cord along the cast on edge, which has worked very well. And I say it's worked very well because I actually don't know, I don't know now, I could work it out, 
but I don't know just by looking which edge was the oh, of course I can work it out <laughs> mm. this is the um the edge with the I called edge and this was the cast on edge that I applied afterwards an I cord applied I cord <sighs> oh I'm having trouble but I did do um I did the I cord edge on the blue and I did an I cord bind off cast off this is worked really well and I do like it but looking at the pattern again recently, it's just as lovely without having anything to do with an eye cord. If anything, it makes it a little less bulky. I did shirt Sherman short rows. I did shirt, sh <laughs> I did it again. I did German short rows. That's the inside. Uh, because I like German short rows. I know where I am with them. I don't seem to get in a muddle. They make sense to my pea brain. And I think for this project, it has worked out very nicely. I wove in my ends by doing the thing where you follow. I didn't just whip around one of the garter stitch ridges. I did the thing where you follow the wiggle of the stitch as it weaves up through the sort of the two rows and it makes for a very neat weave to the point where I can't find one to show you. Oh there's one. Is it? Yeah. Where is it then? Oh could you hear Wilf? He's being noisy. That one there. Can you see? It's almost imperceptible. I learnt it off Pinterest. It's much easier to do on stocking stitch, but it is almost invisible on garter stitch. No, I can't. Uh, yeah, I can barely see it. Can you see it better on a? I can see it better on the navy side, but I think that's just because it was harder for me to see. So I didn't do as good a job and also I've still got some little ends to weave in. Yeah, little tufty end. So I've gone from feeling quite disappointed with this pre-blocking to feeling really quite, especially now I'm showing you, quite pleased with it. The weather is warming up so potentially this will get quite a little bit of wear now because it's one of those things that is going to see me through the chilly days in the spring. That was good timing because my battery broke. No it didn't, ran out. It makes me think of Kate that does because the last time I saw her she gave me this. I'll be sad when it runs out but won't last forever and I but I can keep the tin can't I now it says on my screen tracking is cancelled but I don't know if it actually is I cast on some socks the other day I've been thinking about these for some time and the reason why I cast them on is actually nothing to do with this sock it's to do with my next project all will come clear. <laughs> this is woolly mammoth fibre and this was a mini set that was a present from a friend so it's not an advert or anything it's just a genuine present. Aren't they lovely? So the plan is Hopefully I've got enough for heels, toes, cuffs out of this one. I'm going to do an afterthought heel. <laughs> Can you hear Wilf laughing? 
I'm going to do an afterthought heel so the stripes are not disrupted and also I, <laughs> I think they fit my foot quite well as well. Uh, it's non superwash blue face Leicester sock yarn so from what I understand I need to knit the foot slightly longer so that when they naturally felt a little bit they'll shrink up and they'll have a lot of strength because of the felting and they'll fit me well because of the shrinking. That's all I can tell you about those. They're a 64 stitch on a 2.25 chow goo, 100 centimetre long circular needle, which is my preference at present. And I'm absolutely loving, loving them, loving knitting a nice plain neutral, no, vanilla sock, that's what they call it, don't they? Let's shove that down there because that's, that's all we need to know about those socks at present. So the reason why I cast those on is because I want the leftover yarn <clears throat> for my next project. My next project I am knitting in this cone that comes from Fernhill Fibre, which is a farm that I can almost see if light could bend <laughs> when I look out of my window because I look out across the Mendip Hills and Fernhill Fibre is just over there. Um, on the Mendip Hills where it's a regenerative farm where they farm um, I think they're not natural breed not rare breeds they're um, like indigenous breeds to England I might have made that up I'm, I'm going to make a jumper out of this now my plan is what I want out of this is a jumper that's a crew neck jumper I don't want a yoke. I do want to knit it in the round as much as possible. And I wanted it to be top down. And I had very specific requirements for the design of the shoulders and the sort of the way the sleeves look. So it's taken me a while to find the pattern that I, I that fits the bill. Now that I've bought and printed out the pattern and made a start on it, I'm not 100% sure that I have chosen correctly because I don't think I read properly the blurb. But I am going to go with it because I think it's worth it for the, for the jumper itself. Let me show you. It's by Zanetti Knits and it's called the Accentuating Crew Neck. Mm, I don't know if you're going to be able to see very well from here. Oh, I know what, you can have a look on my phone, can't you? I'll show you pictures on my phone. So this is perfectly the, the jumper shape that I wanted. Extremely plain is what I wanted. But I very much was picky about the shoulder shape. Here we go, look. Can you see that? So there's a seam that goes along there, along the top of your shoulder, and then your arm comes out of it, so that it's a, more of a tailored effect. And what I'm going to do with this lovely jumper, hopefully, is embroider botanicals and flowers around it. Now I know that in, I know that that probably would have lent itself better to a yoked sweater but I wanted to have that sharp edge to contrast with like, like the wild flowery thing that is going to go on. I haven't decided exactly how I'm going to do it, the placement of it or anything and I thought if I thought to myself if I decide that I don't want to go down that route I will still end up having a really hopefully well fitted and structurally flattering crew neck jumper 
and then I'll have plenty of this left because there's loads here absolutely loads I'll have enough to do a more of a yoked sweater if if I need to and then I can use my woolly mammoth sock leftovers to do the flowers I've also got some other full skeins of woolly mammoth in pinks and oranges so I shall blend them all together <clears throat> So that is my knitting plans. I've done my gauge swatch and I got gauge. That is a lovely combination of wool wash and sheep. <laughs> because this is this is minimally processed yarn. Or well, not as minimally processed as say Play Too Lopey, but it's not fiddled and farted around with very much at all and the fact that it is the sheep have been fed watered grown bred sheared and then their fleece processed literally about six miles away from me makes me feel so happy oh there's Toby he's mowing the lawn I knew he'd do that today he can't help it as soon as that grass looks like it needs a trim he's out there so I have cast on, I cast on last night and I wasn't paying attention and I was doing short rows and I've messed them up because look at all these holes and it just looks absolutely dreadful. So that is coming off and I'll just start again. The thing is, the pattern, there he goes again. Noisy thing is the pattern is not um I thought I knew where it was going and I obviously don't know where it's going so I need to pay more attention so let's just unravel this and I'll start again later on tonight and I will concentrate on it properly I think that's all from me for today thank you for sticking with me towards the to the end um for those of you that do always watch my videos and you leave me nice comments and you've subscribed and all of that i and i know i've said that i'm not going to be doing um giveaways and things like that but just as a thank you for still being here and for being just lovely people i'm going to make something at pottery probably a yarn bowl something like that or something with a knitting theme and I'm going to do it as a giveaway for you guys, as a thank you for sticking with me with YouTube. When I announced my Patreon channel, I, I lost a load of followers. Um, so I know that the people who are left here are genuinely wanting to be here. And I just want to say thank you very much. Thank you for that. And I want to give something back. So I am going to do a giveaway, but I will not be mentioning it in the opening frame of any video because I don't want to do that thing where I say stick with me to the end when I tell you about a giveaway that you can get involved with. I, I just want it to be one of those things where he's mowing, he's back again. I want it to be one of those things where it genuinely is for you stalwarts. Um, so when the time comes, when I have made the thing and it isn't going to be a quick process because my pottery teacher's moving house. So it's it's going to be several weeks, months from now. But I just didn't. Want, I just wanted to acknowledge the fact that I really appreciate that you guys are still here with me today. I don't mean to be dangling a carrot like oh keep coming back because there will be a giveaway at some point. I know it sounds like that, but that's not that's not my mission here. Oh, hurry up on that patch, Toby Ballard. He's in his element. He's like a country squire. <clears throat> I've distracted myself now, haven't I? So I will see you soon for April vlogs. Daily April vlogs. 
I thought it was about time I did another vlog series. I really enjoy making them and I really enjoy watching them back again and I love the interaction that we all have and I like the structure and the motivation it brings to my day and I need some motivation because gardening season is coming and I don't want to do it but I think that I think that having a oh dear what am I saying I think that having a <laughs> there's, the, there's a certain word I'm after I think that having a oh, I don't know what the word is <laughs> I'm struggling here because I can't find a very specific word that I <laughs> I want to use to describe what I want to say and I can't find it I think that having a <laughs> oh this is bad purpose I think that having a very specific purpose when you are doing daily vlogs is a good thing for me <laughs> so I'm gonna embrace that and hope that uh, having you guys with me is going to make me get out there in the garden. Now, we do have Easter holidays during April and we will be going over to France if there's any snow. So the gardening part of it, <clears throat> part of it will be towards the latter end of April, which is quite late for me for sowing seeds and things like that. But whatever, it'll be fine. If I am too late, I can always go off to the garden centre and buy plug plants and catch up that way. And I'm not going to go to town with gardening this year. There's stuff in the house that I want to get sorted. And I want to enjoy the garden rather than endure the garden. I don't want to toil in it all the time. I need to fall back in love with it rather than seeing it as a bit of a burden. So that's the plan. So come along with me if you fancy it. I think it will be fun. Now I'm going to go and take my clothes off, put my decorating stuff on and sand down the polyfiller that I put on earlier on and we'll get that utility room looking magical. Thank you ever so much for being here and I will see you soon. Bye!